this up and what do we end up with? And apart from a piece of apple too small to bother with. In fact, what is everything ultimately made of? It was once thought that the answer was atoms. Atoms, the fundamental building blocks of matter. In fact, the name atom means that which cannot be cut, which is hardly the case. Atoms have an inner structure. They consist of a central nucleus surrounded by tiny particles called electrons. The nucleus has a positive electric charge, the electrons a negative charge. And it's the electrical attraction between these charges that holds the electrons close to the nucleus. Electrons are considered to be truly fundamental. They really are one of the, the basic building blocks of the matter we see around us. The nucleus, is that fundamental? No. It too has an inner structure. It's made up of neutrons and protons. The neutron and proton are very similar to each other. It's just that the proton carries a positive electric charge, whereas the neutron has none. It's the charge on the protons that gives the nucleus as a whole its positive charge. But you might be thinking, hold on, uh, but won't the nucleus blow itself apart? You know, the protons, they, they all have positive charge, and as everyone knows, light charges repel. No. Things are more subtle than that. Okay. Here I have two protons, right? I'm going to push them apart. That represents the electrical repulsion. But they don't separate. Why? Because there's another force at work, an attractive force. In, in the nucleus, the second force is called the strong nuclear force. Strong because it's, it's more powerful than the repulsive electrical force. And that's what leads to an overall attraction holding the nucleus together. So, are the proton and, and neutron fundamental, like the electron? Nope. When you look inside them, you find that they're made up of tiny, tiny particles called quarks. A bit like the pips in the apple. Two types of quark, what we call the, the up quark and the down quark, which we denote by U and D. The proton has two ups and a down, and the neutron two downs and an up. So both the proton and the neutron are made up of three quarks each. Quarks, like electrons, are believed to be truly fundamental. They mark the end of the line. So everything we see uh, around us is made up of two kinds of quark, up and the down, together with the electron. And to this we need to add a fourth particle, the neutrino. Neutrinos are produced, for example, in the nuclear reactions going on in the sun. The neutrino is like the electron, except that it carries no electric charge, and so it doesn't experience the electrical force. And like the electron, uh, it doesn't experience the strong nuclear force either. That's only felt by the quarks. But it does experience what we call the weak nuclear force. That's a force responsible for, well, for certain kinds of radioactivity. So because they experience only this weak force, neutrinos are famous for hardly interacting with anything at all. 100 billion solar neutrinos can pass through my thumbnail every second, and I don't feel a thing. So there we have it. The four constituents of matter, the up and the down quark, the electron and its neutrino. What could be simpler? Except that it is not that simple. No, it's much more interesting. This is the, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. It accelerates protons round in a huge circle. Two beams in that tube traveling in opposite directions, one going clockwise and the other anti-clockwise, and at various points they are made to 
collide. Why? What, what, what's it all about? Are we trying to break open the proton into its constituent bits, those, those three quarks over there? No. That, that might have been one of the original motivations, but actually something much more intriguing than that happens. Two protons, right? They come together and collide. Hey presto, an extra particle, a particle that wasn't there before the collision. That's right, a new subatomic particle. New matter being created. But didn't we learn at school that matter can be neither created nor destroyed? Yes, and, and that's, that's still true. You, you can't create new matter out of nothing, but that's not, that's not what we're doing here. Now, this new matter arises from the, from the energy brought into the collision by the original bombarding particles. It, it's a consequence of Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. What this is saying is that matter it's a form of energy, a locked up form of energy. Some of the original energy of motion, E, has now been transformed into this, this locked up mass, M. One of the, the major tasks of high energy physics is to identify what kinds of new particle can be produced. The more energy available in the collision, the heavier the particles we can produce. Hence the insatiable drive to build ever bigger and more powerful accelerators. And what we find is that some of these new particles carry properties that ordinary matter doesn't have. Properties that have been given quirky names. Strangeness, charm, top and bottom. I myself had the privilege of belonging to the international collaboration that was the first to make a direct sighting of a particle carrying charm. Now, like the proton and the neutron, these new particles are made up of strongly interacting quarks. But because of these new properties, the new particles can't all be made of just the two types of quark that we've been talking about so far, the ones that make up the proton and the neutron. No, we need to add more fundamental particles, different quarks, quarks that do carry the new properties we've found. One carrying charm, one carrying strangeness, one for top and one for bottom. And to further complete the picture, we have to add additional fundamental particles which, like the electron and neutrino, don't experience the strong nuclear force. The muon and its neutrino, the tau, and its neutrino. So that's it. Three groupings of four particles, each of these groupings called a generation. Three generations, one, two, and three. These are the ultimate constituents of all the matter we see around us, plus all the more exotic types we create in these high energy collisions. Unraveling all this has been a wonderful achievement. But we're still left with some worrying puzzles. Three generations. Why three? Why not just one? Or if you're going to have more than one, why not an infinite number? What's special about three? Then there are the masses of these particles. What determines the values of their masses? And their masses are very odd. The tau particle, for example, is 3,520 times heavier than the electron. Uh, as for the neutrinos, they are so incredibly uh, uh, light that for a long time it was thought they had no mass at all. As for the quarks, well, the top quark weighs 50 to 100,000 times as much as the up quark. Why? You know, why, why these huge differences in mass? 
What, what, what does it all mean? We simply don't know. In fact, in order to make sense of our understanding of the nature of matter and the forces between them, we need to feed in by hand the values of 19 different parameters. And we have no way of justifying theoretically what any of those values ought to be. Being a high energy physicist myself, it remains my hope that one day, someday, we shall be able to find answers to these outstanding questions. But I can't help wondering how close we might be getting to the, the boundaries of the knowable. Okay, everybody. Uh, Russell, I know high energy physics is your thing, but do you have to devote quite so much time to it? Yes. Can't, can't we cut it down? No, no, you should thank your lucky stars that I was as brief as I was. You know, I haven't mentioned anything about the Higgs boson. Everybody knows about the Higgs boson. I've heard about it, but I haven't said anything about that. I haven't said anything about grand unification of forces. Why do we believe that there are only three generations? Fine. What, what, supersymmetric yep. partners, I haven't mentioned that. Oh. Okay, and the magnetic fine. monopole. Yeah. No, yeah. where, where, where? Oh. The, I've hardly started, okay, Tony. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Moving on, everybody. Mm.